Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. In Leviticus 9, the priesthood has been set up. And it started, begins, Leviticus 10. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, priests, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense therein and offered strange fire before the Lord which he commanded them not. Fire came down in 24 on the brazen altar. That brazen altar, the fire there is to be brought to light. The incense altar, the golden altar. Somewhere Nahab and Abihu are standing around with their censers and they pull out a matchstick, a lighter, whatever they pull out. And the strange fire is not a blue fire, it's not a green fire. It's a fire that is strange from God that is not off the burnt altar. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Now we don't know where they were. But God had already shown his pleasing of Israel by sending fire upon that brazen altar, and then he sends fire down. To show that he's displeased. Now fire is fire. Sin is wrong. These two men had done something that God not told them to do. And fire is the judgment. That's what hell is today. The wrath of God came down. The wrath of God came down upon the burnt sacrifice because it was for sin. For sin, God sends fire. And then you, you get people, oh, Jesus never mentioned hell. You want to make a bet? Hell is the consequences of sin. Realize that these two men died by fire and are burning in hell today. Then Moses said unto Aaron, now let's get the fact in, these are Aaron's two sons. Because it's going to seem quite cruel what we're going to read, but when people die in rebellion against God, we're going to see the attitude. Revelation 1, 6 says we are priests. We tell them about Jesus, we do all we can do with them about the gospel, but that moment they die... Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh to me. They didn't do what God told them to do. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Just had two sons die. And Moses walks up to him and said, God's going to be glorified. God is going to be honored among the children of Israel. And Aaron's like, okay, yeah. They did wrong. We have Exodus and Leviticus for what God has said is right. Those two heard. They had to hear because they're Aaron's sons and were into the priest's office. They could not say, oh, we never knew. 
And Moses called Mishael and Elzephath, the sons of Uzziah, the uncle of Aaron. So that would be, Ezekiel would be, uh, I can't even name that, Amram's brother. That's also the uncle of Moses. But we're talking about the priest now. We're talking about the street, the straight priesthood. In relation of Aaron, I'm going to call your uncle. He's also my uncle. But we're looking at the priesthood. I'm going to call his sons. I think they're cousins. I don't know family relations. So he calls his cousins over. And said to him, Carry near. Carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. Now, it's either they are outside the holy place, or if it's the tabernacle, they're outside the gate. Probably inside the courtyard. If they're outside the courtyard and or at the at the door of the tabernacle, everybody saw this happen. Hey, here comes the fire of God. Phew. Wow. They praise and worship and God. What was that? That's fire of God again. What's that smell? It smells like flesh. What on earth happened? So they came near and carried them in their coats. Let's go to Daniel 3.27. Daniel 3.27. Some of these clothes in the Bible are almost like... <laughs> and I put quotations if, you, if this is for, a video, for the audio. I lost that from thought in my mind now. Asbestos. Because in Daniel 3, 27, I'm in chapter 2 again, it says, and this is Nahab, Abihu, and the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of them of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire passed on them. Here is Nebuchadnezzar's wrath in the furnace against three men who says, I'm going to live for God no matter what you do, Shadrach, Meshach, and Mendigo. And they go into that fiery furnace and their coats don't burn up. And when you come back over here to Leviticus, these two men, God sends fire down and their coats survive. That's a powerful God we have. And it pictures hell. Now, I don't think they're going to have clothes on in hell, but look at that. In their coats out of the camp, as Moses said. Drag them out. And bring them outside the camp to an unclean place. For what? Disobeying God. Would God send a person to hell? What did he do to these two men that offered strange fire that God never told them to bring? Somebody hasn't read their Bible. This is a serious charge against Nahab and Bible. Not only did they burn to death, but they're now burning in hell for rebelling against God. And God said, just leave their coats intact. And on the other side of the coin, we got Nahab and Bible. I mean, uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and, Me and Mimigo are sent into a furnace of fire by Nebuchadnezzar for God. And their hair don't singe, their coats stay intact, and they don't get the smell of smoke passed on to them. And they go to glory. 
And Moses said unto Aaron and unto Eleazar and unto Ithmar his sons. All right, his two sons have died, two brothers have died. Uncover not your heads. Keep those bonnets on. You keep that holiness to the Lord on. There is no mourning for the death of these two boys. Neither rend your clothes. And throughout the Bible, see, when they want to show sorrow and great uh, uh, remorse, they'll rip their clothes. Least ye die. We'll run back to Genesis chapter 3. That's what Eve said. If I eat that fruit, at least we die. God says, listen, if you mourn for those two boys, I'll, I'll get you right now. They did wrong. They did not do right. They've heard the word. They've got it from Moses. Moses has been faithful. They're the one that's wrong. Don't you even dare show remorse. Come upon all the people. I mean, wait, at least wrath come upon all the people. I'll get the people too. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord has kindled. Let Israel mourn, but you better not. Now look what the Lord said. I kindled that fire. That was me that did that. That was me in my anger. Imagine if anybody ever comes out of hell in Revelation 20. Well, Why did you, how and what did you do? I did that. I started that fire and I started the lake of fire. I kindled it and I said and Jesus said in Matthew that fire was kindled for Satan and his angels but you didn't want to listen to me you didn't give heed to my word believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved saved from what if it's not hell what is you being saved from so as a man is cast off in the lake of fire depart from me I never knew you you have not done what I told you to do And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. We left them. They were in the, in the congregation. They were in the door. They were in the tabernacle. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. Now, what do you say as far as a Christian? Isn't it great that we got scripture? Scripture, God accused me today of not rightly dividing the word of God on a particular subject. I just told him to shut up. The anointing oil. Let's go to 1 John 2.20. You've got to get this one. Scripture with scripture. We're going to go all the way to 1 John. 1 John 2.20. 1 John 2.20. The Bible says, But ye have an unction. I'll tell you what it means in a minute. From the Holy One. And ye know all things. Alright. You have an unction from the Holy One. That means anointing. And John's written to Christians. We have been anointed by the Holy Spirit. That's what that anointing the oil is. It's olive oil. Olive oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. Revelation 1. It, we're called priests. 1-6. Man, if you told your family and your friends what it needs to be saved and they die without God, that's their, you've done what you've done. Now, we get a, a learning from Ezekiel. If we don't tell them, then we have the blood of our, on our fingertips. But if you told them exactly what you're supposed to tell them, well, that's their own fault. And God will tell Jeremiah when we get there, Lord willing, don't you even cry for those people. Don't you even pray for those people. They're so wicked. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you, the priests. And they did it according to the word of Moses. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, now God is speaking to Aaron. It's been through Moses. Revelation 1 6. Now, let me go over there. Now, let's get with the content. Let me read to you Revelation 1 6. Okay, we're, we're going from the children dying. 
Now we're going to go, Revelation 1.6, let me read it to you, Jesus Christ talking. It has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. All right? That's us. Verse uh, 4, John to the seven churches. I had to read that because the guy said, I misquoted the Bible today. So, All right? So we're priests. God said to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Bible speaks about in Corinthians, were the tabernacle. Our bodies are the tabernacle. So here's a great verse right there. Don't drink. Of the congregation, least ye die. There it is again. That's Genesis 3.3. 3, least ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation. When you're doing the ministry of God, don't you dare have wine and don't you dare have strong drink. When does a Christian ministry ever stop or pause? or It never. We're to be always reading, always praying, always praising God, always trying to tell the lost people about Jesus, always trying to raise up a Christian to grow even more. That ye may put difference between holy and unholy. And between unclean and clean. So drinking alcohol will take away your understanding of what's right and wrong. What is clean and unclean. Alcohol. Boy, I'm having a bad time there. I keep thinking and then it goes right up my head. Alcohol. Effect on your brain does not give you proper understanding of what is right or wrong. Hebrews 10, 19 and 1 Peter 2, 9. Tells you about that between the holy and the unclean and the clean and the unholy. That ye may teach. 2 Timothy 2, 1. That ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. So the priests were in charge of teaching the people. As priests were to teach the people about God and Jesus Christ. Were to stick to the textbook called the King James 1611 Bible. And when we go off to the worldly textbooks, we're wrong. We're guilty. And we're not doing right. And if we do it with liquor in our breath. We're totally wrong. We have no right to do it because we have no right between holy and unholy and unclean and clean. We are to tell the people <coughs> excuse me, what is holy and unholy. Well, you know, just leave those Christians alone. Judge not, they should be judged, you know, about the Christmas tree and all that. Jeremiah says that Christmas tree is, is heathen. No, well, not be telling people, you know, what they should do. If it's right and holy, you're to tell them. And then let them decide between God they want to do right or wrong. But you're to tell them, hey, this is wrong. This is right, according to the Bible. That's our job. When I'm talking to lost people, I'm telling them the right way is Jesus Christ. That's it. It's no other. Everything else is unholy. And if I'm dealing with a Christian who, who needs to grow, I'm going to tell them, hey, this is right and this is wrong, according to Scripture. In Corinthians it says we're to judge things and we're to teach. And God said that to Aaron, verses 8 to 11. That's a revelation to Aaron by God. And Moses spake on there. Now we're back to Moses. We had a little thing there where God says, okay, I'm not using Moses. I want you to hear this. I want you to get this straight. I want you to have no alcohol in your job to teach those people what is right and what is wrong. Boy, has the church has failed in that. And Moses spake unto Aaron, and unto Eliezer, and unto Ithamar, his sons that were left, you know, that little P.S. 
take the meat offering. We talked about that earlier. That remaineth of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Remember, you put the handful in. And eat it without leaven beside the altar. Sit by that altar and eat it. For it is most holy. Ye shall eat it in a holy place. Because it is thy due. It's your reward. It's your payment. And thy sons do. It's for their work. Of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire. For so I am commanded. You guys, that's your meal. The wave breast. So you wave it back and forth. And the heave shoulder. You wave it up and down. Shall ye eat in a clean place. Thou and thy sons. And thy daughters with thee. So that, that wave breast. Is for the family. And they be thy due. Thy sons due. Which are given out of the sacrifices. Of peace offerings of the children of Israel. That peace offering. Is something to bring home to the family. The heave shoulder and the weighed breast shall they bring with the offerings made by fire on the fat and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord. And it shall be thine, the priest, thy sons with thee by a statute forever as the Lord has commanded. So they live by those offerings. Another paragraph. And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering. Where is it? Where'd it go? Hey. And behold, it was burnt. The same day, it was burnt. It didn't burn to the third day. Well, why is it burnt now? I was like my wife's hamburger today. She opened it up, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, Moses, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, So it was their responsibility. It's burnt. You guys are in trouble. Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place? Moses has an anger problem. That's what got him in trouble with the second time at the rock. Because we're going to get by the end of this chapter. Gonna be, there is a well cause why they didn't do it. Why they didn't eat it. You're not eating the sin offering in the holy place. Seeing it is most holy. God has given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation. See the iniquity. Isaiah 53 of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53 verse 5. So wait a minute. If you're in a Catholic church or if you're in a Protestant church and that wafer becomes the body of Jesus Christ, you're totally wrong. If you want to symbolically make it according to the law that you try to put your people under, it ought to be goat meat that you serve at the Mass. They're not cutting part any human flesh. That meat that they're the offer for iniquity is goat meat. Somebody's got something messed up. But we run over to John. Jesus said, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, and then they run to hell. Yeah, that's eternal life. No. Even the Jews, and in, in, they're like, you know, what did you just say? Uh, you, if that's the truth, you violated the law about eating the people and eating blood. And he says, you know, flesh and blood profit nothing but the spirit. So, the goat, where's the goat? To make atonement for them before the Lord, Jehovah, God. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. He should have indeed have eaten it in the holy place as I commanded. See, Moses told them what God said. That sin offering you guys were supposed to eat and it's sitting there charcoal on the brazen altar or in the brazen altar. And then he, he, he chews out Eleazar and Ithamar and Aaron speaks up. 
and said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered the sin offering. And you gotta wonder because what's gonna be said something's going on here. Aaron knows something. They have offered a sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord. And such things have befallen me. I just had two sons die. Something's going on here. And if I have eat, if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? Something was wrong with that sin offering. And you got to wonder: was it maybe Nahab and Abihu that offered that sin offering, or Aaron is upset that his children were killed? And it's like you know, if I eat that, I'm not going to eat it with the right spirit. Because then it says, Moses heard that, and he was content. And we're not told what Aaron is thinking or, or saying. And you can only assume that it had to do with his two sons. I'm not really in the right spirit today. Or maybe they offered that, that sin offering, and if God wasn't pleased with them, would he be pleased what they did? And that's how the chapter leaves us. We're not told. And there's many things in the Bible we're not told. We do not have the understanding. So we leave it like that. Moses said, okay. You guys ought to eat it. Aaron speaks up. And Moses said, okay, that's a good answer. Fine with me.